if this whole vowels thing, vowel modification, mixed voice vowels, good vowels, bad vowels, front vowels, back vowels thing is making your head spin and really leaving you with more questions than answers, questions such as, I don't understand why you wouldn't just sing the same vowel as the original singer. This video is for you because I'm going to answer that exact question. Thank you for that question, Dynamofo. It's a fantastic question, right? Now, if singing were as easy as just, I mean, you just sing the word like Freddie Mercury does and suddenly we can sing Bohemian Rhapsody, right? You just sing the same vowel as Chris Cornell and you can sing Beyond the Wheel, right? I would be out of a job. You wouldn't be here watching this video. You'd be out there singing Beyond the Wheel and Bohemian Rhapsody, right? And unfortunately, that's not how singing works for a lot of reasons that I'm going to share with you in this video. Number one, the sound you're being presented with and often the sound you think your favorite singers are singing is not the one they're actually singing or, caveat, it's not the one that you have to sing to sing in that same way. It's going to make way more sense as we go through this video, right? Now, my example in the last video on the channel where this comment came from was an audio slave song, right? Where the lyric is room by room, right? Room by room, patiently, I'll wait for you there, like a stone, I'll wait for you there, alone, alone. Right? I'm actually singing a front vowel and I'm modifying that as eh. That's not a really obvious choice. I'm going to take you through that in a minute. But before we do that, how's that for pitch, Dan Manley 2525? Now, you guys that have been watching my channel and getting something really fantastic out of it, or you're actually working with me and you're out there touring and you're out there making records and you're out there kicking ass and, and reaching your goals. I would love it if you left a comment because we can't let people like Dan Manley 2525 drag us back into the dark ages of the old paradigm where people are telling us what we can and cannot sing. People that are not singers and will never be singers telling us what we can and cannot do, right? My very first vocal teacher, I think her name was Susan. No one's ever heard from her ever, ever since, which makes sense, right? She was not a good teacher, right? One of the first things she said to me was like, oh, no, you'll never, ever sing rock. You'll never sing high stuff. You, you should only ever sing country. Here we are 25 years down the track. Some wise ass is saying I should just switch to country because, you know, how's my pitch, right? I'd love it if you guys left a comment down below. If you've gotten anything from any of my videos, I'd really, really love it if we could just shift this paradigm and turn it into something more, more positive, right? Now, the reason why I'm singing, eh, on room, right? Room by room, right? Is because I'm singing it as a front vowel, and that's the framework for those sounds, right? It's also the same sound Chris Cornell is going for, right? Now, if you've got a higher voice, you can probably get away with pushing a bit of an O sound in a classical sense, and it's not going to sound bad. You, you're going to be like, oh, I can do it as an O. What are you talking about? However, if I'm to sing that sound as an O, it's going to bring out my natural classical voice type, right? And it's not going to suit the song, right? It, I can probably push that O sound, right? Roam, roam. Right? I can't sing an audio slave song like that. It sounds wrong. And it's also not what Chris Cornell's going for. But that's what you thought you heard. If you know the song, right? You thought he was singing Rome by Rome. I'm actually singing er, r, and I'm modifying it as air, right? Rome by Rome. Right, it frees up my range like crazy, and it's the right word. Quite often, what you're being presented with, and quite often, what people are singing, is one of two things: not really what they're singing, <laughs> or not suited to you as a singer. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Right? Another really great example of that. Right? If I want to sing a Credence song, right? When it's over, so they say it'll rain a sunny day. I know. Shining down like water I want to know Have you ever seen the rain? I want to know Have you ever seen the rain? 
Coming down on a sunny day, right? I know shining down like water, right? Obviously, I realize John Fogarty in 1968 doesn't have a 1970s Australian accent, right? Again, we'll talk about that more in a minute, right? Even if I Americanize that, right? I tried to put on an American accent. I, I want to know. I, I, I don't even know how you fucking do that, right? It's not a bad accent, right? He's quite literally singing, ah, ah, want to know. And he's singing Shannon down, lack. What a, go and listen to the original. The vowel for down is the same as shining and lack. Again. It'll rain a sunny day. I know. Shining down like water. You hear it now, right? Because I made you aware of it. But if you just listen to Credence, you know, I've been listening to Credence for 40 something years, right? I had no idea that's what he was actually singing until I worked it out and got the framework for it and started following it. And then the same sound started coming out. It's like, wow, this is actually really easy. What the hell? I can actually sing way more stuff than I thought. I don't have to just sing country music, right? You're often being presented with sounds that aren't being sung in that way. That's the, that's the main reason why you should not sing the same vowel as the original singer, right? Number two, your vowel and your pitch are intrinsically linked. Right? Everything is derived from the fundamental vibration of the vocal folds. If we're talking about clean singing, right? Vocal folds come together, they vibrate a division or multiple or integer of that frequency. Don't quote Wikipedia at me, please. Is then split up into the distance or the size of every resonator within the voice. And you get different sounds derived from that frequency, right? You can probably already imagine what happens when you change the pitch and ask for the same vowel. You don't get the same multiple or integer or whatever you want to call it right? And you either put precedence over pitch and what you get is, you know, you get that. Is that a familiar sound for you? That's a quite a natural flip in my voice. It's always going to be there if I sing in that way, right? Or you do the Eddie Vedder thing, you Eddie Vedder it and you shout and roar to try and put precedence of the pronunciation over the pitch. You should do neither, right? So for example, if I'm singing, you know, Right? What did I sing there? I sang the word yeah, and I did a bit of a blues run, right? Well, no. Phonetically, I actually sang a, which makes no sense, right? Because I sang the word yeah, right? It's a, I'm modifying the top to i, coming back through e, a wider space. Uh, that may not be suitable for you if you've got a higher voice, just as an example, right? You didn't really hear me make those changes. You don't generally hear it in someone that knows what they're doing and, and a better singer. You don't, probably don't hear it in Dio's voice. You don't hear it in uh, Freddie Mercury's voice. You're probably not hearing the, the, the kind of fluky shifts in James Hetfield's voice when he's singing a G4 at the start of Master of Puppets. His voice has to change at that point to sing that value. You're just not picking up on it. So you try and shout that sound and you blow your voice out three seconds into Master of Puppets, right? So number one, the sound you think you're hearing is not actually the sounds being sung or not the sound you have to sing to sing the same sound to get the same results. Number two, your vowel and your, your pitch are, are intrinsically linked. So you need to make an adjustment of one or the other to sing the sound you are looking for. And we want to sing on pitch, so we want to go for the right vowel sound. That's what vowel modification is. We're not singing a different vowel. We're coloring the vowel that we're singing to match our pitch, basically. Right. Finally, your voice is not the same as the original singer, right? So for example, if I want to sing a journey song or, or something like that, right? My voice doesn't do the same thing that Steve Perry's voice does at an A4 or a C5. It doesn't mean that I can't sing journey songs. It doesn't mean I can't sing credence songs. You know, my voice does different stuff to John Fogarty. My voice is a lot lower than John Fogarty's voice. It doesn't fucking matter though, right? It doesn't mean that you have to sing just country music because your voice does something different, right? We're just not catered for in, in a lot of I guess, conventional and contemporary approaches in, in singing because maybe it's not the norm. Maybe it's more challenging to teach someone that whose voice is doing some weird shit. <laughs> like my voice, just sing country music and you'll be fine, right? Your voice is not doing the same thing as the original singer. So the choices they make are not the same choice for you, right? Same as Chris Cornell. This was something I never thought I'd ever be able to sing, right? Stuff like Temple of the Dog. I'll shoot you a cover of that at the end of this, right? I'll give you a link to that. You know, Temple of the Dog, Soundgarden, all that stuff. 70s rock as well, right? I never thought I'd be able to sing that stuff. And I was constantly trying to sing like these guys, right? Until I stopped and really started using the framework that my voice needed to sing in that range, you know. You want me out 
Like an old winter cold Trying to be safe from the cold Right, this stuff just comes out like it's on tap now because I'm not singing like Chris Cornell. I mean, I'm not claiming to sing like Chris Cornell, but I'm also not doing what he's doing because his voice is different to mine. He's got, his voice doesn't sit in the same place. My voice doesn't do the same stuff. My breaks aren't the same point. So why would I sing the same vowel sound, right? I've got to color things differently and then it comes out natural. Once you work this out, it's going to be a groundbreaking moment for you, right? Number one, the sound you think you're hearing on a record is never a true sound, really. So I like to do these tutorials without backing tracks. You can go and listen to me doing covers and all that kind of stuff and, and the original music with Dead Spirit Communion, but I like to you know, be as real as I can with you guys. Yes, this is actually how I sing, right? This is what comes out. There's, there's no kind of fudging any of this stuff, right? What you're hearing is not necessarily what you need to do to get those results, right? That's, that's number one, right? When you hear John Fogarty singing I, he's not singing I because it's not really a vowel that can be sung. He's singing A ah in this case. There's, there could be different cases of that word being sung in a different way, right? Number two, your vowel and your pitch are intrinsically linked. They're basically the same thing, right? Finally, your voice doesn't do the same thing as the original singer. We're actually going to add a fourth one in here in a second, right? My voice doesn't do the same thing as Steve Perry's voice from Journey. Doesn't mean I can't sing Journey songs. Same as Chris Cornell, right? My voice doesn't do the same thing as prime Chris Cornell on Louder Than Love and Bad Motor Finger, right? Doesn't mean I can't sing those songs. I just have to follow my framework. Finally, accent, right? It's probably a little bit more of people's accent in some contemporary singing than you realize, right? Or at least the choices they make are based around that, right? So for example, Peter Steele had a... 1960s, 1970s Brooklyn accent. It's unlike a Brooklyn accent from these from today. It's almost like a Boston accent. It's super wide. Go and watch an interview with Type of Negative. They've all got that Brooklyn accent, right? Doesn't necessarily sing in that way. It definitely colors his choices. John Fogarty or, or someone like Chris Cornell. Kurt Cobain's a really great example, right? Go and watch an interview with Nirvana, right? He's got that kind of Northwestern accent and it's all through his singing. Sebastian Bach, Canadian accent, the, the smaller vowels, the French vowels, the narrow vocal track, that's all through his singing. Angry Anderson has an Aussie accent from the 50s. I've got an Aussie accent from the 70s, most likely. Our accents are different, even though we're from the same place. John Fogarty's, uh, John Farnham's got a similar accent to him, right? So you have your accent in your subconscious. This is the reason I'm bringing this up. When I close my eyes and I think of something or I read lyrics, I read them in an Aussie accent. That's going to give you a little bit of a chuckle, but it's true. I know you probably think that I have the accent and you don't have the accent. We've both got accents. You've also, it's always the other guy that's got the accent, right? Everything is being filtered through your accent. So if you just read a word off a page and you think that Chris Cornell's doing something and singing that word, it's still filtered through your accent. You need to follow the framework of how to sing better and sounds that are efficient and work well, basically good vowels in the right register for your voice if you want to sing better. This is door number three type stuff, right? A framework for better singing outside the norm of, hey, just clench like you're going to the bathroom and everything's based off ah and all this really strange stuff that you're going to say out there. Slam your tongue down. Choke off. Lower your larynx. You're not going to hear me saying any of those things in any of these videos, right? This is door number three. You get two kids on a beach looking at a beach ball. One kid swears it's blue. The other kid swears it's red. They're actually both right because they're looking at the same thing from two different perspectives. The ball has multiple colors, right? When you get someone cramming it down everyone's throat that the ball is, is fucking red and that's the law of how you should sing and you're the kid on the other side of the ball looking at the, the blue and you just, well, it's fucking blue, right? This doesn't work for me. This is door number three. If you've tried all of this stuff, the whole vowels thing is spinning your head or you've taken lessons before and people are making you do weird stuff and it's just not working for you and it's not making you a better singer, there is something behind door number three for you. Now, there's a link down below where you can reach out and get in contact with me if you are serious about taking your singing to the next level, becoming a professional singer. Definitely going to ask you some questions. If you ain't got goals, I can't help you. However, if you're just looking for free stuff, you just want to watch more free stuff, that's completely okay, my friend. You have no obligation to me. There's a link down below, the very first one. That's all the free stuff you're ever going to need. There's even, even training videos available on the website, which aren't available here on YouTube. 
Uh, there's a blueprint, which is basically all of this written down. It's the framework for better singing written down for you in a booklet. Just go and download that. It's free. Go for it. Go for your life. But if you're serious about working with me, hit that other link, get in touch, let me know your goals, and we're going to talk soon. But most importantly, you need to hit this subscribe button and you need to leave me a comment down below if this shit's working for you so that people like Dan Manley 2525 don't drag us back into the dark ages of the old paradigm where people are telling us what we can and cannot sing based on their inability to do it themselves. We'll talk soon.